Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 2 of Greatest Us Let's Play Modern Minecraft series. We left off, well, with me mining. And as you can see, lots of mining been done. In fact, I've used all the stone picks up, so it's time to actually upgrade to some iron tools. Which is, yeah, pretty much a standard part of any playthrough of Minecraft. And I'm going to run out of wood, do not I? So let's just grab a little bit more. Upgrades are all iron stuff. Um, I probably won't need the stone tools anymore, so... Let's just leave them in here for now. So, what we're going to make this episode is our first Ender I.O. machines. I've used this grindstone to get um, some initial order bling, but it's not very good. So... We're going to need two things. One, the machines, and two is the power source. Now, for power, if I'm going to ignore thermal expansion and industrial craft 2, for power, there is native Ender IO ways, and the kind of starting point there is called the Sterling Generator. There we go. <clears throat> it's just some stone bricks, furnace, piston, basic gears. Everything apart from the bits in the piston, which is redstone, we can get. Um, the other way to do it is to get the survivor's generator from extra utilities. Now this is far more efficient, but it needs a bit more redstone, but you know, not much more. It's far more efficient than the sterling generator. I'm probably going to make one of each. This is very, it, hmm, it's very efficient, but it produces a really small amount of power. So it's not all that great if you want to do a lot of, um, get a lot of power at once. And the third machine we're going to need to create is called a sag mill. Now this is, if you're familiar with thermal expansion, it's the equivalent to the pulverizer. And for this, we're going to need to get more iron, another piston, some more iron, copper, which is why we need the copper gold and redstone. So the first thing we're going to need is gold and redstone, so let's go and get some of that. Which is why we need the iron pick. You can't really you can't really get that with the stone picks. So as you can see I've probably skipped out on some of these on the way down. So here's some gold. Yeah more gold. some redstone. I can hear some lava nearby so that might be coming useful. I haven't seen any diamonds yet so I think we can skip the diamonds. Uh, but I'm going to need some lava if I want to skip the diamonds so lots of gold, lots of redstone, uh, some dense redstone some lapis that's always going to come in useful particularly when we get to the smeltery lapis is used to make um, smeltery tools uh, drop more uh, the fortune enchant basically so it's not going to affect the ores like gold but for other lapis and for redstone it gives you a good chance of getting more drops which is you know always desirable Let's get some more of this. I'm going to try not to do too much mining. 
10. Do I need 10? Probably will grab this lead and silver though. It's usually silver, yeah. There we go, and now to hop upstairs for about five minutes or so while I climb up the staircase. Ugh. I will be glad when I get to speed boots. Need some way to get faster than this. There we go. So, I think we're going to need one piece of gold. Do 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 uh, Nearly. There we go. And we're going to need some copper as well, so... Copper... That noise, I think, is creeper, creeper plants, but... I'm not going into go investigate them. So... For now, I'm going to get three of those. I'm going to make uh, the sag mill, which needs iron bars and more iron. I'm definitely going to need more than one piston, so let's just make four of them. And it's at this point I've probably forgotten that I'm going to need more wood. <laughs> One second, let's check. Oh no, not too bad. I've got, got a little bit left. Okay. That might be just enough, in fact. So small flint and iron. Don't worry too much about flint, by the way. Obviously, you get it. There's our segment. You get it from um, um, using the sagmill itself. You can drop gravel into it, and it will make flint directly. Um, so this is a furnace. Fine. Okay. So if I shift click. Survive this generator, and we can just set that up. Um, we don't have to be too discerning about it. Um, for now, just drop it down and drop the sag mill on top. Put some flint in here, makes it a bit more efficient. That's why I said you don't have to worry about flint too much, you can put gravel in there. So, if I want to put gold ore in there, it will crunch the gold. Let's just start with the iron. In order to do that, I need to put some fuel in that. What is that? Not video, it's audio. There's something. Uh, ambient. Music's off. Yeah, that's the one. So as you can see, it started processing. It's always active. This would be see up here. You can change this to be active with signal, which is probably what I normally want. And to do that, just create a lever. Pop it on the side and turn it on when you want it to be working. As I said, that survivors generator is producing lots of efficient power but n not a great amount of it. In fact, almost nothing, really. Um, as you can see, these aren't. This isn't building up. This isn't building up. It's going to take a while. So, 
yeah, I tend not to use the survival generator except something just leave running in the background while you go and get other methods. And that's what we're going to make, the other methods. So we want the sterling generator. So we want some stone bricks, another furnace, another piston, and some sticks. And maybe I shouldn't have made that in my pistons because I'm not out of wood. But I did make a bed, so let's go and see how my crops are doing and show you those to you. Just the usual crops, wheat, etc. Um, barley. Some con, some wheat. But I did also farm one of these. This is what I was really looking for, blueberry bushes. They, they will grow three high, all by themselves. And you can just repeatedly... Um, Okay, you can just repeatedly just you know break off the second and third one, then lay them out, and they'll, they'll grow over time. It, take, it takes quite a bit of time, though. What was I looking for? I was looking for wood. Alternatively, you can just dry out the zombie flesh to get you some. Zombie jerky. Bit nasty, but... Does the job. And I'm going to need to cook up some stone. Which is not going to take very long. Um, as you can see, it is processing. So it has done about six. Still hasn't used up much coal at all. As you can see, there's a lot of time remaining per coal. Produces a lot per coal. It just takes a long time. So, if we had a chunk loader, which basically keeps this area loaded even if we're away, you could use one of these just to keep things topped up. And yeah, I don't mind it for that. But for for mainland purposes, I want a way to boost that quite a bit. And. We've got everything. No, we may need another furnace. What am I missing? I don't think I am. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I need more stone bricks. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, well, maybe not a while. Let's cook this up into some bread. Here's the other advantage of sag mills. You occasionally get the byproducts. And I believe that may depend on using things like flint. Gives you a higher chance of that kind of thing, if I remember rightly. It's been a while. So while this is actually going, uh, there we go. There we go. Sterling generator. Now this one will supply quite a bit of power. 
was active and if you look it's now building power which is exactly what we want you won't see it building in here until this one's full so yeah we've got a way of building power next thing we need to do is kind of a powered version of the furnace and there's a few ways to do that and lots, lots of different mods the way to do that in Android is the alloy smelter and that may sound complicated but it really is it's a furnace plus some extra stuff I just need lots more iron here. Furnace, machine sassy, we've already got one of those. So. Let's melt it. And while I'm at it, another lever. Lever, lever. So if you take stuff out of here, let's say this copper. Down here it says all smelting modes. You can change this to alloys only, which is mainly for the end IO outputs. Furnace only, that makes it just like one of these, but powered. Or all smelting. If you're just going to put one thing into it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, ha, yeah, really doesn't matter. But if you're going to put more than one thing into it, be a bit careful. So, furnace only, at least to start with. And an extra advantage of Ender IO is the input output system. Now. You can do this with the thermal expansion too, um, but there's a bit more configurability with uh, Ender IO. So if I put a chest on top here, I click on configure IO. If I hold on the left mouse button, I can rotate. I can say what I want to do with this. Now, you can set a few modes pull. So I pull, that's the input chest, and I can put an output chest on the bottom. Or I could do, this is by right clicking, by the way, it changes modes push so anything it outputs goes into this chest that's probably what I'm going to do you can set it to pull and push so <laughs> you can start out with some ore it'll pull it in push it back up that gets a bit weird um, I'm going to go into that a little bit later but suffice to say sometimes it will push stuff up in here particularly if this mode is on all smelting in fact I believe that's furnace only that may actually work fine uh, so let's just Change that to now for push pull. You see how quickly it burned through this this uh, coal, and this is still on thirteen down here. Still, still hasn't done the actual job. So, on this one, configure I/O. I can also set the power, so I can set this to. Uh, sorry, this one to disabled. So it's not going to output power to this. It's just going to output this way. So I've got to restack these and make them a little bit more ordered, but for the moment I just want to charge this one up, so do that. And that should start working again. Oops. So if I drop silver, lead, if there's anything here, you'll see the iron gets output. it will start pulling in the lead as well. In fact, if I take this out just to demonstrate. Yeah, there we go. It's pulled one of the ores in. Right, in fact, well, we don't want the ores. Ah, wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. There we go. It's pulled the copper in. The ores we want to go in here. Similarly, we can set a chest up on there.
we go. Again, I could probably make another one of those. In fact, hmm, why not? Just keep the other one topped up. Think I'm out of everything. Oh, furnace. Fine. Well, we don't need this anymore. Now, these used to keep using power, even when there was nothing in them. So I've always had this double lever set up. Um, they may not use it anymore, I will test that a little bit later, but I do remember just them using it power like no one's business, and we don't really need that, so... That's pretty much all the oils I've got. So that should start cooking up. Oop. That should start cooking up now. It gave me lots of gold, and I've already got some iron. Pretty much got audibling set up, really. Well, there's not much else to say, really. I think that's, that's pretty much a good point for the second episode. Now, just before the end of it, we're about two thirds of the way through. Uh, there is one other thing I should mention. Uh, first of all, if you see some lava, pick it up in a bucket or two. We're going to use that. Second of all, um, clay. Remember rightly, I said go out and collect some last episode. I went and got some. Best place to get it is in shallow water. Well, at least that's the best, best, place, blah, best place to spot it. And we're going to start working on the smeltery. Now, stack of gravel, stack of sand, stack of clay. Shift clicking seems to be, have quite a bit of lag at the moment. It's, it's definitely only 1.7 that's doing this. Uh, let me show you why. Um, what I normally do is this. I normally have crafting table, stick, get support, pocket crafting table. So what you can do with this is uh, if I hit my inventory and press C I can, anywhere, yeah, I can use this to create anything I want. So if, let's say if I want some torches, which I do. Hopefully this isn't going to crash things. I can just shift click here. But and it's happened now. There's this bit of lag after you do that, and if you do a full stack, there's even more lag to shift click things in and out. So you probably want to keep using these crafting stations. However, for the convenience of making things that are three by three, it is worth keeping hold of a pocket crafting table on you. Uh, particularly if you want to do something like, uh, let's say you wanted to make a furnace. If I press B now, uh, sorry, F, and then I can take this out, or I can fill that and press B, and as you can see, yeah, and press X, everything goes back out. It's actually a lot more convenient than the crafting station. Hopefully, the lag will be fixed soon. Yeah, I've got a nice collection of doors now. So, we now have grout. I am grout. So not right. <laughs> if this grout grows back after you destroy it, I'd be so happy. Um, but no. So what we can do with this is um, just cook it, and it will make then seared bricks. In fact, if I just take this out, there we go. In fact, because it's only coming from the survivors generator right now, it is horribly, uh, horrible amounts of power. 
Yeah, see, it's all being used up there. But. Once it completes, come on. In fact, while that's doing that, let's just make some drying racks for this emergency food. I think it's just three slabs. It is three slabs. See that lag when I was trying to change over? It's a bit annoying. It's far too laggy. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think I'm probably going to try the uh, upgrade to Java 8 and see if that helps while everyone else looks why this is going wrong. There we go. That's going to dry out and turn brown into monster jerky or zombie jerky, whatever it is. Here we go. Save bricks. So to start our smeltery out, just craft them like this, and you get a seared brick. Seared brick block, if you like. Which gives us a book. Which gives us all the instructions we need for Tinker's Construct. Tinker's Construct creates a smeltery that looks like this. However, in 1.6 it used to always have to look exactly like that. Well, yeah, you could have more of these, and yeah. But that size, if you, if you see what I mean. In 1.7, it's variable sized. You can create, you can create this, which is a two by two, or one by one, three, five, seven, eleven, etc. It depends how much resources you have to create and how much doubling you need. It, it's generally used for doubling, but also for tool creation. So that's going to come up in the next episode. In the meantime, I'm just going to make more and more of this seared brick. Um, a couple of stacks would be nice, but not necessary to get started. I, as I said, I could start with just <laughs> one by one, uh, which is a dire amount, a tiny amount. So I may still start with a three by three if I've got enough resources. If not, I'll step back to a two by two or a one by one. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's just really to start to create the, the better tools than this iron. The iron's okay, but we want to replace it as quickly as possible, really. Um, I want tools that regenerate over time, not just have to keep breaking and making and breaking and making, etc. Okay, thank you for this episode. We've now got automatic ore doubling. We can just destroy this. In fact, I like to do that as soon as possible. Do I have some lava? Because it is so terrible. It has to be burned with fire. Uh, I want to drop, where are you, that one, that one, bye, and I grab my lava back, cool, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time when we're going to go into smeltery tools, and creating replacements for pretty much everything that I can see, thanks for watching.